All right, all right. Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. I've got a really exciting video planned for you today. We are basically testing the maximum output power of this amplifier. And what we have for that is we've got our power resistors, two one ohm resistors currently connected in the series. And we're going to test with a two ohm load and a one ohm load. So we've got the input on our main power supply set to 30 volts and we've tuned this or we've set the bias point appropriately. We're feeding it with the uh, signal generator right here for the one kilohertz sine wave and you should be able to see that on the screen. So all I need to do in order to kick off this test is increase the, yeah, the output. And now we're in five volts per division. Right now we are pumping 6.7 watts into the load. And we are burning 28 watts on the input. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So that means we're operating at an efficiency of about 25%. Not great. And when we get 4.1 volts on the output, Oh boy. Some man right here. Whoa, we're getting a thermal runaway situation. Had to turn it down. I saw the current was steadily climbing on the input. Something was not going as planned. So we're capping out just about 5.9. 5.9. Oh, come on. Yeah, 5.5 volts out. It's right around 12 watts out. But that's not where we got maximum power out of this amplifier in our simulation. Where we got maximum power out of this amplifier was with a one ohm load. So let's go ahead and change this setup. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, so the load is right here, bottom of the screen. Got the fan on it. We're using one of the one ohm resistors. This one has a resistance of 1.2 ohms. We've got our linear supply providing the input for the amplifier because less noise means better sound. We've got the signal generator feeding our one kilohertz sine wave and of course the oscilloscope measuring the output. Right now we're seeing an RMS output amplitude of 1.7 volts. So now we're taking 1.7 squared divided by 1.2. That is 2.4 watts. Whoa. Uh, that means our FETs are burning a lot of power. Yeah, we're at about 10% efficiency. Yeah, it's not super. Okay. All uh, right. I uh, don't want to stay here too long. What are we getting on the output? We're getting three volts out. Means we're getting seven and a half watts out, and we're getting 42 watts in. That's 17% efficiency. Oh boy, dare I go higher? I guess I do. We're seeing 4.516 watts out. Can we push it further? Nope, that's clipping. This is kind of on the bleeding edge. We are at 4.8. 19 watts out divided by 2.12 times 30. 30% efficiency. Hey, we got there in the end. We just had to get up near the maximum output power. Okay. So, wow. Um... Yeah, one ohm load, lots of power. That is pretty incredible. I am... Okay, yeah. So 30% efficient, let's just think for a moment. How much power are we burning in these parts on the board? Yeah, we're burning 44 
0.4 watts, about 20 watts per BJT. Right on. That nice wire bond resistor. Yeah, these are the ones we're using, by the way. Just a couple 100 watt rated parts with the heatsink. Flange bolted to an old CPU cooler that we didn't mind sacrificing to the cause. So what I can say for certain is that our temperature compensation is not working very well. It is not working very well at all. Because when I let these parts cool down and the heatsink brings these things back down near ambient temperature, we see that DC bias go down to back down to about that 0.05. But as the two primary MOSFETs heat up, everything else just, yeah, nope, not even close. We were at about 0.3 amps of steady state bias. So as I turn this up, you can see that that low clipping is less flat because we're, yeah, we're basically pushing the limits of this cap. We need more capacitance. At this frequency, it's not really ideal anymore. And the maximum amplitude we can get before we start to clip. Ah, uh, yeah, we're starting to lose it there. We did our first power test. What does this mean? On its own, I guess not a whole lot. This doesn't really mean a whole heck of a lot on its own, but together with some data from an off-the-shelf amplifier, I think this will really show us a lot about what we implemented here today. So I guess that's about where we're going to leave this video. In our next one, what we're going to do is test out another Class AB amplifier. Actually, one of the first boards I ever made. I think the second circuit board I ever made. I etched it in my basement at the time. I'm actually going to need to dust the thing off. I haven't used it in a long time. Uses totally different power supplies. Never really evaluated it. Just it made noise, and that's all I wanted at the time. And hey, more power to past me. But it's time to finally put that thing to the test. Run it through this same suite of tests. Test it um, with a 2 ohm load and a 1 ohm load. Look for the maximum power out, the efficiency. This is going to be great. I can't wait. So... Yeah, special thanks to our Patreon members for supporting the channel. Really appreciate the extra step you've taken to support us directly. Most of all, thank you for watching and thanks for staying till the end. I hope you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.